Ladies and gentlemen, the recipient of the 2013 Homeboy Hero Award, Richard Cabral. I have been anticipating this night for a long time. Tonight, I'm being honored for having transformed my life. But I want to make it clear, I am not transformed. I am in a perpetual state of transforming. Every day of my life is an active and continual struggle to rewrite a whole way of thinking about being in this world. As you look at me and the other homeboys and the homegirls around this room, be aware that we are all constantly transforming. And we will for the rest of our lives. I also want to make it clear that you are very critical to our process of transformation. You choose to see us or not. You choose to judge us or not. You choose to look beyond this exterior and embrace us or not. Tonight, I would like to take you on a journey. I want you to feel the world I grew up in. It is a journey from childhood to gangs to incarceration, to homeboy industries, and now to becoming an artist, as an actor, a poet, a thinker, a father, and as a man. It has been a painful and perilous passage that brings me to you tonight. When you look at me and the other homeboys and homegirls, you can be sure that our stories are very similar our journeys began when our forefathers decided to follow a dream. I hear the voice of my grandfather. See, nothing was happening on this rancho, in this pueblo of ours. No money, no future, but we would change all that. We would cross the sierras, cross the rios, make that desperate journey over the frontera. See, all we wanted was prosperity for our for our children, a future they would never have, a life where they could live their dreams, they would grow up to be somebody one day, and they would know what we sacrificed for them. They would live the American dream. I was born in East Los Angeles, born into a community within a society, within an America that broke my grandfather. The American dream was big houses, fast cars, fashionable clothes, drop-dead gorgeous women, big, big money, fame. And then there was East Los Angeles. Few jobs, little money, no fame. But my grandparents and their children had very few economic choices growing up, and us grandchildren had no choice about the broken homes we were born into, had no choice about our mothers and fathers totally lost in poverty, racism, drugs, violence. Us innocent babies weren't good enough for them. We weren't enough to overcome their brokenness. We were not enough to ignite their passion to fight for their own children. Innocence was stripped away. Trust stripped away. Vulnerability gone. See, I have seen more pain in my young life than most people in their whole life. Dealt a bad hand, some might say. But to me, my hands were severed at the day of my birth. I am blessed with a mother that knew what was to come. She prepares me for a world that will be cruel. I am taught to never feel forced to be a hardened man before I grow up out of a boy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Born to a man that never loves me. See, I used to hold on to my mom's hand. Yeah, those were the happy times. And then we would hear him stomping up the stairs. Mom hides us away. Shh. And pray. God, if you are listening, please don't let him be drunk another day. Where's Junior? And where's the other one? Please, Roberto, they're asleep. This is my house, and those are my boys. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
I pretend I am asleep holding my little brother tight. The door cracks open, I can feel his presence. Still sipping his bottle, the glare of demon eyes. I push my baby brother to the wall. I will take it all. Papa. I look at him like everything's all right. I show no fear. And forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. You'll grow up to be just like me, he says with a smirk. He takes another swig from his bottle. So you must be strong, just like me. Close fist, I took one to the body. Uh, before I could fully curl up, he caught me twice more. Why bring me in this world only to let me suffer? I wonder if he knew how much you hurt me. You see, the beatings are bad enough, but when you walk out forever, that's what hurts the worst. What did I do to make it leave me? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Becoming a gang member becomes a given. They have been in our streets for generations, so it's not out of the ordinary. For us, it's hereditary, not a choice, a necessity, a place of protection, a place to be somebody, a place to get something in a world of nothing. The gang lifestyle is rooted in desperate homes where kids have no hope, have no love, Drug-dependent parents, a mom and dad who despise each other, an abandoned mother bringing home another man to play daddy. The list goes on and on. Molestation, physical and verbal abuse. This fuels the transformation of a child into a gang member. You have Boy Scouts in country clubs and fraternities. For us, it's gangs. They promise security, a belonging, a new kind of family on the block. Gangs teach only the strongest survive by opposing anybody who gets in our way, by elevating our minds with chemicals that give us the aura of invincibility, by killing if necessary. We build layer upon layer of rock around our hearts until they are untouchable, hard, and impenetrable. I see you standing outside the house waiting for them to come out. A car slowly pulls up to where you're at. Boom, the nice guy explodes with the fire from the gun. Boom, 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 the core screeches out. In my mind, I'm scared. They burn right past me, I run to you. Laid out on the concrete, moaning, crying in pain, the puddle of blood gets watered by the second call for help. Please, someone call for help. I pull you in my arms and I hold your head up. Primo, you with me? I'm here. You're going to be all right. I'm here. I feel the warm blood pumping from your back. I try to stop you, but it just gushes through my fingers. It hurts you, whisper through your moans. It's all fuck. All of it. Get out. Get out. You stay with me. Don't be close to us. Don't you close your eyes. There, in those eyes of yours, I see the innocent days of our childhood. How did it end up like this? Why did it end up like this? Someone please help. See, homies ain't supposed to cry. But having my young cousin die in my arms, I cry. And I cry inside. In the middle of this rock, there is still a beating heart that needs love. I'm so alone. Sure, I'm in a gang, but I can't turn to them with this pain. I'd be met with you wimp, you pussy, be a soldier. I wish my dad were here so he could help me become who I'm meant to be. I wish my mom were here so she could give me some comfort, but she's in bed with a new man in her life. It's all fucked, all of it. Get out. But where and how? My little cousin looking up to me with those innocent eyes is all I see. Getting high brings my only sense of relief. My only choice is to go deeper into this life, to lose myself in the darkness. My newest transformation is to ride with the evil spirits. I descend into drugs. I hurt people and I steal things more than a couple times. What does that make me? A bad person? A menace? Not worth living? Lock him up and throw away the key? 
in and out of prison, and I'm back in once again. A young man now, 19 years old, and already an accessory to attempt a murder. Ha, who would have guessed I'd be sitting in jail this night playing cards with Spooky? See, we've been good friends and soundmates for months, and Spooky challenged me to tell him one of the craziest war stories. I tell him about that night in East LA, when hungry like a wolf, I seen this fool on my street. All I want is blood. I run up and I hit him up, where you from? Knowing that his answer will be long, I'm already drawing on him. And before I could fire, he runs in that crowded store with all them damn kids with their moms and dads. It don't I follow him in with perfect aim, I'll pull the trigger, click, click. Nothing happens. It's jammed. In a blink of an eye, I could have killed that guy. Spooky stops me and he says, Navarro, you almost killed. Right in front of me. Fool, that was me that night. No need for further words, I say it all. And in the most awkward moment, all we can do is laugh. But this laughter, it quickly turns into tears for both of us. Tears. Out in the open and raw, we see the craziness of what we've become. How can I have hated you that much when I knew nothing about you? All that mattered that night was you lived on the other side of the street, of the block, of the neighborhood, of the city, of the world. And that's enough for me to want to kill you. Spooky said, we are no different. If it would have been me that night with the gun, I would have done the same. But then he leans in and he whispers, but you are me, and I am you. And suddenly, I hear a mother's cries as she buries her son. And I hear another mother's cries as her son is sentenced to life, and I know that I must stop this cycle of insanity. I start to read everything I could get my hands on in prison. I commit to changing my life. I have always waited for others to show me the way, but I realize I must do this on my own. In my search for life's purpose, I discover the world of theater. I read the works of Miguel Pinheiro and Stephen Ali Gerges, two great voices of urban America. These writers seem to understand the truth of my life. They seem to peer into my soul. Through this literature, my heart is open to the deeper reality of life. And that of my fellow homies. See, Shakespeare cannot tell you about me finding my uncle's heroin spoon in my grandma's house at eight years old. Tennessee Williams didn't know anything about doing time up staying and hoping my girl wasn't out there tricking. But Gerges are a window into those dark places I never knew existed until I was there, where we hear the screams and nobody comes, hear the crying of the barrio kids lost before we even born. I commit my life to communicating the truth of my brothers and my sisters, mothers and fathers through acting and writing and storytelling. See, thank God Homeboy Industries and Father Greg are there when I come out of prison. Greg is the father I ain't never had. A man that I could turn to for wisdom and trust. He's the one that reflects back to me that I am meant to be something special in life. See, homeboys and Father Greg give me the respect and nutrient I was supposed to receive as a child so I could grow up into the man I was destined to be by God. I am... I am taught responsibility, self-respect, and a belief I could become an artist. Father Greg inspires me to believe that I have a unique gift like no other. The rock that has protected my heart is now chiseled away. Innocence restored and trust renewed. I feel vulnerable once again, free to stand up and be heard. I make choices and begin creating my own unique voice. See, I am now a working professional actor. Five major films, numerous television appearances. <laughs> and a one-man stage show to be produced this summer. 
I want to end this with one of the first monologues I read in jail that began my present transformation. This was also the first monologue I performed in a professional acting class after graduating from Homeboys. I accept tonight's award on the behalf of my fellow homies. I am still breaking free of the cycle of blood and despair that have plagued my life. And so are they. And so in this character of Flaco from the play of Stephen Ali Gerges called Den of Thieves, I leave you with the words of Flaco. Yeah, well, maybe I'm not perfect. See, up until now, I've been pretty selfish and bad, and I don't apologize for it. But if you grew up how I did, you might be the same, maybe worse. You might be dead right now. See, maybe I didn't have all the opportunities you had growing up, but I ain't making excuses. I take full responsibility for who I am. I did what I thought I had to do, and here I am, still alive and still standing. That's right, I'm standing here with the one gift no one's ever gonna take away from me, and no one ever will because I won't let them. I'm standing here with a world full of potential still coursing through my veins. I'm young, good looking, <laughs> highly intelligent, charismatic, I got charisma, baby. I'm a natural born leader, I always have been. Can you deny it? I do not. See, someday soon I'll be a force for righteousness, and when that happens, I'll move mountains. War is coming, yo, and when it does, the good guy's gonna need people like me, because people like me were rare. Now, you're right about one thing. Up until now, I haven't done much to make, much to make a difference, but my time is coming, son. My time is coming. And if I die now, I mean, the world may be losing the next Che Guevara. <laughs> the next Malcolm X and shit, and they'll never even know I was here. I would hate for the world to suffer such a devastating loss. I mean, wouldn't you? I'm going to let your conscience be your God, people. Benito. Thank you for this great honor. My journey is not done. I am not yet transformed. I am still transforming, as are my brothers and sisters here tonight. See us. Feel us. Reach out to us. We'll reach back. Let us help each other become the human beings we were meant to be by God. Together we can do it. Good night and thank you. Woo!